I suspect that many hams do not know how coaxial cable works. For them, it's just a hose that carries RF to the antenna. And they tend to believe myths, like in the HF bands, you need an SWR1. And if you don't, the coax will radiate and suck up all your RF power. Two big myths. So if we understand how coax works, we will be immune to such myths and be smarter hams. Center conductor dielectric shield. Okay, we all know that. Did you know that because of skin effect, separate currents can flow on the inner part of the shield and the outer part of the shield? RF currents only flow on the surface of a conductor, but these currents do not penetrate the shield to the other side. So the shield is actually like two separate wires. The inner part of the shield and the center conductor carry RF to your antenna, and the current on each is equal and traveling in the opposite direction. So their magnetic fields cancel, which means coax cable does not radiate. Now, in this respect, coax works very similar to ladder line. Here we go. Let's say this is ladder line. RF current in one is equal to and moving in the opposite direction of the other. So ladder line will not radiate either because their fields cancel. Also, with coax, all the RF from your transmitter, including voltage and current standing waves, are contained within the inner shield and the center conductor. So no, standing waves do not cause coax to radiate. That's a myth. Here's what can cause coax to radiate. If current is flowing on the outer part of the shield, well, how can that happen? Well, think about it. At the antenna, the shield is connected to one half of the antenna, which means the two imaginary wires of the shield are shorted together. That also makes the outer part of the shield part of the antenna, so it can radiate. It's called common mode current and can be blocked at the antenna feed point by a common mode choke. Common mode choke. You can make one like this. This is one type. Just take a ferrite ring and take uh, your coax and wrap several turns around it. This is at the antenna feed point. There we go. More turns than that, but, uh, you know, this goes to your antenna, and this side goes back to your transmitter, and a ferrite choke like this will block that common mode current from flowing down the outside of your shield. A couple of questions. Since balance line and coax work in a similar manner, why do we call one balanced and coax unbalanced? And... Why does coax have more loss than ladder line? Here's our ladder line. It is balanced because both conductors are identical. They have identical electrical properties. Now, is that the case with coax? No. The two conductors are not identical. That makes it unbalanced. They don't have the same electronic characteristics. Well, why does coax have more loss in ladder line? Well, one big reason is that the dielectric in coax creates more loss than air, which is what separates ladder line. In fact, some very expensive low-loss coax cable is made with an air dielectric, like we see here. This stuff is three inches in diameter, and that is the price per foot. But it can handle 12.8 kilowatts at 800 megahertz, and its attenuation per 100 feet at 894 megahertz is less than a half of a dB. That's pretty good, but, you know, um, I think I'll just stick with some homemade 
ladder line. So that's how coax cable works. Make good use of common mode chokes, otherwise you could have RF in the shack problems big time. Well, consider subscribing to this channel, and if you want, you can click on that little bell so you don't miss the latest video. 73.